All right, so uh, we're going to be moving on to paleo. Uh, all right, so uh, we've been doing the fasting. I've been posting a lot about fasting. Uh, I'm going to start posting about paleo, but I'm going to just touch base on it right now. I'll come back later to uh, to it today. Um, but expect uh, to be seeing a lot more paleo stuff because that's uh, pretty much the next stage. So the first stage is open window, which is the worst um, you can still get results out of it uh, open window I would um, consider that to be a, if it fits your macros kind of deal where you're training and you're trying to offset uh, the negative effects of eating um, crap um, quite frankly it's actually very difficult to and you, you can't really uh, out, outpace it um, I do have a video that I've talked about uh, maybe I'll just share it on here as well it's from my YouTube channel but if it fits your macro um, you're still going to be um, uh, having a reverse effect. So if your your objective is fat loss, it's not going to be possible. You might put on more muscle mass, but you'll never actually outpace um, a poor diet. Okay. Uh, so anyways, to further our results, um, we're going to be switching over to a paleo diet. Okay. And uh, just to summarize, I love the study of anthropology. Um, and I have long before I've gotten to nutrition um, just to see how evolution has affected uh, the human uh, human being. So in terms of um, uh, evolutionary psychology, you start to realize that most of our actions are based off of, um, of, of evolution. So a lot of the decisions we make in terms of fear and anxiety, in, in terms of um, you know how we think, how we select our, our mates, uh, all comes down to evolution. So my point being is why would our eating be any different? Um, it, it's literally for since since the times that we lived in the in caves to now, you know, our DNA has only changed, you know, by a fraction, like 0.1 percent, if even. Um, I'll I'll see if I can pull up that statistic, not statistics, but but uh, research, I should say. Uh, to show that our DNA has not changed. It's a very uh, slow and, and tedious process. So it's, it's, our minds have actually evolved far greater and far quicker than our DNA has. So, um, our, so you know, like if you think about it, a good example, I mean, I know we're om omnivores, but I'm going to use this as an example, okay? So uh, typically, we can eat anything, okay? So you take you take a lion, and of course, you know, you can start shoving hay down a lion's throat. Of course, they can consume it. Um, chances are they're going to get sick, though. You know, and that's the way that humans behave. Somebody creates a product, you know, um, and you hear crazy stories all the time, like uh, they're using, like, something that would be equivalent to windshield wiper, and it'd be, end up in your food, and then we would consume it. Of course, we can eat it. But of course, it's gonna make us sick. Just as it, just as in, you know, a lion eating uh, hay and grass is gonna make him sick. Doesn't mean he can't eat it. And we live in a in a society where the food products are literally just products. They're designed um, to to have us consume. And a lot of it, and we know now, um, you know, a lot of it is nutrient um, depleted. You know, they're they're stripped of nutrients, and they're not. We're not getting the nutrients we need. So it's funny how we can be a fully fed, overly fed uh, society that is malnutrition, right? And, you know, so we're, we're, a, we're a third world nation hungry with lots of food, you know. So uh, that's the crazy thing um, that is, is happening. And paleo goes to counteract that. And we, paleo is, is I, I know a lot, a lot of people are like, okay, well, it's, it's, it's the caveman diet. Right. OK. But, you know, like realistically, you know, um, there's a lot of health benefits. And if you look at uh, the history of but but the, the the argument is, you know, like uh, cavemen died super young. And I'm not going to get into that argument. Right. Because our lifespan has uh, increased. I'm not going to get into that argument right now. Uh, but, you know, like I don't think of it as a caveman diet so much as a human diet. So, you know, you can say, oh, prehistoric lion diet, right? No, but if you're going to feed a lion, uh, how do you feed a lion should be the real question, right? Not how do you feed uh, an ancient lion, how do you feed a lion, right? And that's what the paleo diet, I believe, is, is how do you feed a human, right? The way the human is supposed to eat, 
Not the way a, a, a caveman human is supposed to eat, but a human is supposed to eat. Okay, so it's it's looking at uh, nutrient density over just consumption. If it fits your macros, is it eat whatever to to your liking? And we our minds are triggered, in a sense, to eat for scarcity. Again, our DNA has not changed, right? We overconsume is because we're we're actually waiting for winter, <laughs> you know, and uh, and crops and food. You know, you wouldn't get berries in winter. Right, so you wouldn't get uh, any kind of grains or vegetables in winter, you know. Um, and in, in fact, when you actually look at it, uh, Inuits uh, were eating high-fat diets because agriculture wasn't available for them in the way that it is in a more warmer climate. So they had to rely on, uh, you know, walruses and seals and stuff like that. Uh, although they did have some carbohydrates, right? But it's not to the extent that that we would have them, and it'd be seasonally. Right, which is how we're supposed to be consuming, right? A feast and a famine, right? And so that's actually, if, uh, if you consider it, that's exactly what we're doing, right? So we got the the feast. So when the, our fast breaks, we we consume, and then the famine is our fast. So this is actually uh, re-simulating how a human should be eating, okay? And uh, and it allows our body to uh, be effective in both means. And I've I brought this up before. You know, uh, this is the our, the body is not trying to kill us. It's actually a very efficient, um, uh, you know, uh, efficient machine, um, and you know, it's very high performing, right? And if you look at, um, they uh, researchers have found that the that the the female bone, due to bone density, is how they equated it, were as strong as the modern uh, Olympic athlete. So that goes to say how how amazingly powerful we are. So uh, reading about uh, Paleolithic uh, ancestors, uh, in order to take down a beast, they would jump on his back. They they found many many uh, bones that they found uh, had the same injuries as a rodeo rider, meaning they jumped on the back of the beasts that they hunted in order to get food. That that's that's insane. How how powerful would you have to be to jump on the back of an animal and take it down to eat it? Right, so we are actually very powerful human beings. You know, uh, we didn't have houses and heating. You know, we were enduring the cold. Uh, you know, and if you've seen any of uh, my videos from my channel, you know, I, I love want running in minus twenty and thirty degree weather, and I was doing that last year, literally, literally in summer wear, right? Because uh, I'm trying to trigger those natural human uh, genetic expressions in the human body. Right, so um, that's exactly what we're trying to focus on: is how are we to pull out that uh, s that amazing, super-powered human being, and through food, right, uh, through, and through genetic expression, and a lot of genetic expression occurs actually through food as well, right. So uh, obviously, you know, uh, you're gonna shove hay down a lion's throat. Um, obviously, toxic is a lion's obviously a carnivore, <laughs> right. Um, uh, their performance is going to go down, right? And slowly, you know, they're probably going to get sick and, and ill and, and diseases and stuff of like that uh, just because they're consuming something that's not it's not designed for them. And that's what we've been doing, right? So paleo, again, is going to counteract that and offset that difference. Um, so anyways, uh, that's, that's all I'm going to cover for now. I'm going to talk more about it. So this is kind of just the concept of paleo. And then we're going to get into it into a lot more depth afterwards. And uh, yeah, so uh, specifically, um, you know, how to consume um, the paleo method and stuff like that. And, you know, you're going to see a lot of when you start doing it, there's going to be a lot of uh, people that just like anything in fitness, you know, there's a lot of uh, controversy. So expect other people to, to, to tell you that's the wrong way. But you know what? From my experience, having experience... Uh, many many different diets um, they all work right depending on the outcome you want the goal you want they all work so um, the, but the ones that really work have a uh, something in common with every diet that works right so there's that one principle that that every diet that works is using so so yeah so but for the paleo diet, again, in terms of fat loss, there's a no low insulin response. So any diet that works for fat loss has a low insulin response. Uh, what's awesome about the paleo diet is because you're eating for the nutrition of a human being, 
uh, it's very nutrient dense and that's what increases high performance right so if the lion is getting all the nutrients that it needs the lion is going to be performing at a high rate okay so we got to remember again you know we have this argument um, between uh, you know the because right now I'm actually doing a carnivorous diet just to experiment so I can so I can expand and learn and uh, and do do the research on uh, nutrients in that way uh, of course there's gonna be the other side um, uh, like the vegans and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into the argument I agree with them right and uh, you know there's a lot of uh, nutrient dense foods uh, in being a vegan right so I don't agree I agree and I don't agree with a carnivore diet even though I'm doing it but I'm doing it for my own experimentation and research so um, the thing is this okay we are omnivores again how do we eat as a human being we don't we don't eat as a vegan and we don't eat as a carnivore we are omnivore omnivores so if you actually look at it um, because there's that argument you know like oh yeah well the strongest animal uh, is a vegan is an elephant or a gorilla Uh, but when you actually look at the intestines of a gorilla their intestine is designed to uh, digest high fibrous uh, foods you know and our digestive system can't actually handle that same thing uh, it would make us sick again because we're not you know um, we're not herbivores okay so you have to eat in the way you're designed a lion should eat as a lion and a gorilla or an elephant should eat as an elephant and a human being needs to eat as a human being all right so uh, that's really what the paleolithic diet is it's not the caveman the human caveman diet it's the human diet okay the nutrients that are required for a human being that is how the paleolithic diet works okay so uh, i'm gonna leave it with that and uh yeah so uh, again look forward to more paleolithic posts um uh, specific for this group all right okay so i'll talk to you guys later see you later